Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we are going to be going over unit one lesson number four which is the deformation of the earth's crust. So so far we've talked about the layers of the earth, we've talked about the lithosphere moving on top of the asthenosphere and all those convection currents that are moving our plates and today we're going to talk about the consequences of the movement of those plates. So today like always you should have downloaded your interactive notebook pages and this lesson corresponds with your notes. So go ahead and follow along and make sure you fill those in. So the shape of the Earth's crust is always changing. We know that those plates are moving and that the crust is changing in some way or another. When we talk about the deformation of the crust, we're talking about the bending, tilting, and the breaking of the Earth's crust that happens in response to the movements of the plates. So deformation occurs because of stress and the plate movement is what is causing that stress. Okay, so when I say stress in terms of um, earth science, that's caused by the pressure that builds up in the crust because of plate movement. So when there is enough stress applied, the shape of a rock can change permanently, and we're gonna see some pictures of that today. The crust is exposed to three main types of stress. There's compression, tension, and shearing. So this is a video that goes over the three different types of stress, and I highly recommend you take the time to watch this while you are going through your notes today. So the first type of stress is compression, and this happens when rocks are squeezed together. So the rocks are pushed higher into the air when we have a continental, continental convergent boundary. So that CC there that you see, that's what that means. So continental, continental convergent boundary, that's where the two continental plates are pushing together, okay? So rocks are pushed together into the air at a continental, continental, or deeper into the crust at an oceanic, oceanic, or it can be a combination of both, which occurs at that continental oceanic convergent boundary. Um, this, always confer this always occurs at convergent boundaries, so where the boundaries are pushing together. And remember, convergent boundaries, there are those three types we have to know about. Two is tension, so tension is another form of stress, and tension occurs when rocks are pulled apart. So as a result, rocks become thinner, and this occurs at divergent boundaries. So that makes sense, right? So we see tension as rocks are pulled apart, and we see this at divergent boundaries because the plates are moving away from each other, okay? Shearing is a type of stress where rocks are pushed in opposite horizontal directions, and this causes rocks to twist, bend, or break apart, and this occurs at transform boundaries, right? Remember at transform boundaries, we have our plates sliding past each other, and this is where we get earthquakes, okay? So we've got compression at convergent boundaries, we've got tension at divergent boundaries, and we have shearing at transform boundaries. We have to know the different types of stress associated with each type of boundary. So rocks can actually respond to these stresses in three different ways. They can fold, they can fracture, or they can fault. So this is a video that goes over the difference between anticline and syncline, and I highly recommend you watch this. But the first thing we're gonna talk about is folding. So folding is the permanent bending of a rock exposed to extreme stress. The rock is permanently deformed, but it does not break. This again is caused by compression stress at convergent boundaries. And there are two types of fold, anticlines and synclines. So an anticline is a fold in the rock that bends upwards. So here's the fold center. So like if you had a piece of paper and you took either end and you pushed it in toward each other, you would get kind of this U shape at the top. So that's what this is. This is what the rock is doing. So it's got a folded center and it pushes itself upwards. So you see these kind of upside down U bands. And this is an example of what that looks like. And you can see some of these in the mountains of North Carolina, okay? So again, this is an anticline. So the anticline is when it's pushed upwards and you see these bands in this pattern. Next is a syncline, and this is a fold in the rock that bends downwards. So it's just the opposite of an anticline. So an anticline is kind of like an upside down U, where a syncline is like a normal U shape. 
And again, here is an example of a syncline. You can see the bending. It looks like this U shape. And again, these anticlines and synclines are response to compression stress, which occurs at convergent boundaries. So a second thing that can happen to a rock is that it can fracture. So this is when the rock breaks, but the rock on either side of the break does not move. Okay. So if a rock is fractured, we don't have any movement of the rock. It just kind of breaks apart into pieces. Next, we're going to talk about fault lines. And this video right here goes over the three different types of faults. Again, this is linked in your slides. I highly recommend you watch this. Um, to help you understand the different fault types. But I'm going to go over with them, uh, the faults with you as well. So a fault is when a rock breaks and the rock on either side of the break does move. So if we just talk about um, fracturing, the rock is broken but not moving. With faulting, the rock breaks and it moves. So there are three types of faults. Number one is a normal fault. So this is when one side of the fault plane drops down. So the rock below the normal fault line is called the hanging wall, and the rock above the fault line is called the foot wall. And this occurs along divergent boundaries because of tension stress. So remember that tension is when um, plates move apart from each other at a divergent boundary, okay? So here is our foot wall. Again, it's above the fault plane. And then our hanging wall is below. So what we see with a normal fault, we have our foot wall moving up and we have our hanging wall moving down. Another way that you can tell the difference between a foot wall and a hanging wall is that a foot wall will have an angle that's larger than 90 degrees. So a 90 degree angle is perpendicular and if we follow the top of this foot wall, so if you follow my arrow and you look at this angle here, this angle is larger than 90 degrees, so that's how you can help, it can help you identify your foot wall. Okay, so your foot wall is above the fault, the hanging wall is below. So this is a normal fault where you have your hanging wall below and it's moving downward. Okay, and here is what it looks like in real life. The next is a reverse or a thrust fault. Um, so this is when one side of the fault plane moves up, so the hanging wall will now move up and the foot wall will move down. This is the opposite of a normal fault, and this occurs along convergent boundaries because of compression stress. So our normal fault is at divergent boundaries and our reverse fault is at convergent boundaries, okay? So here we have our, um, this is our hanging wall right? And here's our foot wall. Again, we can see our foot wall because this angle is larger than 90 degrees. And in a reverse fault, instead of this foot wall moving down, our foot wall is being pushed up and moving up above our hanging wall. So this is a reverse fault. And here is what this looks like in real life. A thrust fault is similar to a reverse fault. It's caused by compression, but it's just shallower. So it's pretty much the same thing, it's just um, more of a shallow angle. And this is what a thrust fault looks like in real life. And then our third and final is called a strike slip fault. And this is when rocks on either side of the fault plane slide horizontally. This occurs at a transform fault because of shearing stress. So an example of this would be the San Andreas fault. So here's an example of a strike slip fault, again, just sliding side by side. And here is a picture of what that looks like in real life. And that's it. So now that we've know, we know about the different boundary types, we have to know about the types of stress at each, and we have to know about the faults at each. So just a reminder, we've got divergent boundaries that move away from each other. There we have tension and we have normal faults, okay? Then at convergent boundaries, you have compression and you have reverse faults, okay? That's where the foot wall moves above the hanging wall. And then finally, at your transform boundaries, you've got the lateral faults, the strike slip faults, 
and you've got the tension stress, okay? So you have that movement back and forth rather than up or down or away or towards, okay? So we do need to remember, we need to know each type of boundary. We need to know the stress that occurs at each boundary, and we need to know the fault types that occur at each boundary. Okay, so that's all I have for you guys today. Make sure your notes are complete, and then once they are, you can move on to your independent practice.